Why was Reading Jail built when it was? It was required, incidentally and remarkably, because of some reforms with what crimes you would be deported for to places like Australia or be hung for. So there were now less crimes in the beginning of the Victorian period, which was 1837 onwards. The population of the company, country was growing fast, therefore more prisons were required. What did the jail look like when it was first built? A stunning building. It was part of the design was based on Warwick Castle. If you've ever been to Warwick Castle, that's a stunning building. The walls were built and castellated with towers on each corner. Um, the entrance was like an entrance to a castle. But unfortunately, before the building was listed and when the government of the day could do so because they wanted to modify the prison for a change of use, we lost those walls and we lost the grand entrance in the late 60s, early 70s. And what were the conditions like at the time? Well, compared with previous jails, they were a considerable improvement. Most prisons before that had like one big room where all the prisoners sat or laid on the floor, often manacled. There wasn't proper sanitary. Um, but there was a lot of chat and a lot of interaction between the prisoners and this was another problem because the interaction between the prisoners often ended up with prisoners learning things in jail that weren't what you would want them to learn in jail. They learned tricks and ways like you might go in for larceny and come out as a very good pickpocket. So this was another reason why the authorities wanted to get away from mass open prisons which carried disease, which were insanitary as we think now. So there were improvements. Prisoners had a separate cell. They had a method of going to the toilet. They had a wash basin. They had lights so looking at the Bible only in the evening. They had a hammock to sleep in. They weren't generally heated that well. They had a small window that they really couldn't look out, but they got a bit of light. But from a functional point of view, they were better off. From a mental point of view, they were worse off. What happened to some prisoners after they were released? Well, I'm not sure if there's very accurate details about whether re-offending was higher or not. And of course, Reading Jail was a jail for well over 100 years. And as times change and other reforms were made, and actually it got to one point where it was pretty overcrowded, there would be more than one prisoner per cell. Um, but yes, in, in some cases where the prisoners had done using their terminology, a long stretch, and hadn't been allowed to talk, when they came out, they found it very difficult to hold conversations, immerse herself back into the community of the day, because they weren't used to that anymore. And it must have been a very, very difficult transition. Was Oscar Wilde ever a resident in the jail? Yes, the famous playwright and author was in Reading Jail for over a year. Originally he had been in Newgate Jail in London, but his health deteriorated rapidly, which you would expect. He was um, a genteel man, and then he was in a prison doing manual labour and not able to write, not able to talk, not able to read. So his mental and his physical health, because they're both linked, went down rapidly. The authorities certainly did not want him to die in jail, so they, they, they moved him to Reading Jail, which was seen as a, a more comfortable jail because it was out in the country, but you were still in prison. Very similar prison regime than would have been in London. Um, he was given lighter duties, like in the library. He also got to befriend some of the guards. It is documented in Reading newspapers that he became friendly with some of the guards because he was so intellectual, he could win crossword puzzles, etc., which were in the local newspapers, and the guards benefited from entering these 
competitions and the winnings. Were there any other famous prisoners? Yes, Anthony Joshua the boxer is probably the most recent one who had a conversation with one of the social workers stroke prison guards and basically went along the lines, right lad, this is your last chance to turn your life around. Do you want to be in prison most of the rest of your life doing nothing? Or do you want to do something with your life? And that's what happened. Now he is a world heavyweight champion in the different codes and gone on and made a well respected life for himself. So it is important to realize that probably the majority of prisoners in the end find their calling in life. Charlie Thomas Woodridge, murderer whose execution inspired Oscar Wilde's famous ballad of Reading Jail poem in 1896. You also may have heard of Amelia Dyer, who is considered to be one of the largest serial killers of all time of young babies. And have there been any major changes to the prison? Oh, mainly in the late 60s, 1970s, when the old castle wall and the towers were taken away and the gatehouse and new boring buildings were added, including an exercise yard. Um, there would have been changes to give the prisoners at the time, whether they were mature prisoners or young offenders, opportunities to learn skills, and those skills they could learn while they were in prison, plus there would have been a library added, plus they could add more time to go to the church area, and they had more time to exercise outside the spoke wheel limited section, segmented area had been well removed by then. From a prisoner's point of view, there were great changes and improvements. Terry, I believe there's a connection between Reading Jail and the Eastern State Penitentiary. Is that correct? That is the, that is the case. Um, it's well documented. Not only did it influence the design of Reading County Jail, it also has influenced the design of 300 prisons around the world. And it was a, a new idea with a kind of central hub with wings going off to house the prisoners. With an exercise yard where in the form of a kind of spoked wagon wheel with the segments of the wheel where the prisoners could exercise but be separated because the, the prison went hand in hand with a new system of dealing with prisoners. And the whole object was a regime of cleanliness, godliness and silence. You were in prison to be punished there was no direct form of rehabilitation. You were to consider what you'd done wrong and maybe make plans for not doing those same actions in the future. Repent on the Bible and go forward in a way that would be of benefit to society rather than costing society. It had 230 cells. It was built in a cruciform shape, as I said earlier, with a central hub where the guards were stationed. It was easier then to, for them to monitor each four wings. Hangings were public executions. Outside the front gate, and for the first public hanging, there was an audience in the order of 10,000 people. These hangings often took place on a Sunday after lunch. And to a certain extent, it was seen as a warning to the public not to do any serious crimes, but also as a form of macabre entertainment. A very famous hangman was involved with Reading for a, a number of years. William Cowcroft, the notorious hangman, 
has been associated with hangings in Reading from 1829 to 1874. Some people considered him incompetent because he used the short drop method of hanging, which didn't ensure that the neck was necessarily broken quickly. Some said he did it to entertain the crowd so he could jump up, grab hold of the poor unfortunate person being hung's leg and dangle on him until the person was dead as a form of entertainment. It is estimated that he hung 450 people, often on a Sunday lunchtime, and this involved 35 women. Renin Jail has had many uses. During the First World War, it was used as a place to detain foreign nationals. Also, it detained many members of the Irish Republican movement post the Easter Rising in 1916. In 1973, it was redesignated as a local prison and the old castle walls were removed. Unfortunately, it was not a listed building in those days and Crown immunity meant that the Ministry of Justice or the equivalent then could just about do what they wanted with the building, despite its importance and despite its age. Did they make um, a special provision for debtors in, in Reading Jail? They did. Beside the 250 cells, there was a debtor's wing, or part of a wing, ward. Um, and what a lot of people of this day and age would not probably realised was a lot of people in jail, in jail, like Reading Jail, would be there because they owed money. Because in those days, very few banks, the banks were the preserve of the rich. You couldn't go in and get a loan if you needed to buy something. If you lost your job, there was no time period, there was no unemployment benefit. So if you didn't have the money to pay for your rent, You'd be kicked out of your property and all your possessions with that. Some people had issues like they do today. They would go out to get drunk. They would spend their money in an unwise way and they couldn't pay their bills or pay their staff or whatever else. So a lot of people in Reading Jail at any one time would have been people who owed money. And in those days, no community service no other ways of paying it back over a long period. If the person you owed the money to, whether they were an institution or an actual person, wanted you to, they could go and see a magistrate, probably didn't need to go any higher than that, and get you sent to clink, as it was known, for a period of time. It might be a few weeks, it might be longer. The silly thing about it was, while you were in prison, you didn't have any provision for raising the money to pay off your debt. So very much a catch-22 situation.